Hey filmmakers, this is Kerry with Filmmaker Central and I've got a product review today, the Feel World F5 Pro. So stay right there. We'll be right back. So welcome back everybody. I've got a product review today. This is the Feel World F5 Pro monitor. Now, I actually have been using Feel World monitors for several years. I absolutely love them for the price point. I don't think you can go wrong. They're generally like under 150 bucks. So they're really, really good for what you get. And the F5 Pro is not only no exception to that rule, it adds some really, really cool features that I think are gonna make my use of the F5 even better. Now, sitting on my Sony a7 III, is an F5, the original one. Uh, they, it was the first one that really had a flip bracket. Absolutely love it. It's been a fantastic monitor. Uh, the only downside is they're only about 500 nits. So outside, even with the sunshade, they're they're not super bright. You know, you get what you pay for. You know, that's not going to be in an Atomos or you know some high end thousand nit, two thousand nit screen or Black Magic, but they're going to be great for what they're intended for. And in a studio setting, they're absolutely fantastic. And outdoors, as long as you can get enough shade on it so you can see the screen good, they offer a wealth of awesome features. Uh, this one here, uh, just like all the previous ones, has all the same features. It's a histogram, a peaking filter, false colors, an exposure, um, overexposure meter, uh, called pixel to pixel, it's kind of a zoom feature a check field feature, anamorphic mode, image flip, so you can flip the camera or the monitor back towards the, the back of it or to the front and just flip the image over, a zoom in feature, image freeze, nine grid, which is rule of thirds, a center marker, and new to this one that mine doesn't have is an audio meter. <laughs> That's gonna be great. So let's open this guy up and see what all comes with it. So, ugh. there we go. Okay, so right off the top, we have a packing list to make sure we have everything. We have a touch screen operations guide. Yes, this is a touch screen. So looking forward to that. And on here, it shows if you tap on uh, kind of one section of it, you get the main menu. Double tapping opens the menu up or closes it. And if you swipe up from the bottom, you get a shortcut menu. And then kind of swiping on the left side will increase or decrease the backlight. And on the right side, it will increase or decrease the monitoring volume. Because yes, it has a monitor jack on it so you can monitor your audio. Has a little instruction guide. And here's what we have inside. So let's open this guy up. And a little protective screen on it. I guess we'll start on this side. This has power input, so it can take DC 12 volts in. Now that's kind of cool because uh, there's no shortage of 12 volt power supplies out there. They're super cheap on Amazon or eBay. So just a standard 12 volt power supply will work in here if you want to run it that way or off a battery pack or something else that does 12 volt. Cigarette lighter adapter in your car is 12 volt. Lots of 12 volt power supplies. And that has HDMI in and HDMI out. So it actually has HDMI pass through. So if you're gonna to go to another screen or to a recorder, fantastic, it's got that. I often will use this. Now my F5 doesn't have the HDMI pass through. It was the F7 that did, which was a little larger. And so when I needed that, I would use that particular monitor for the HDMI pass through. Now, why would I use that? Well, for my quote unquote day job, I do uh, um, different videos and tutorials and workshops and things. And when I was doing live broadcasts on it and taking that into a um, device that would bring it in as a webcam to the computer, then I could use that with 
uh, OBS to do my live, live broadcast. So having the HDMI in so I could see the screen on top of the camera and then having the HDMI out going into a black magic box to go into the computer worked flawlessly. Okay, uh, on the bottom here, we have DC out 8.4 volts. So there's a bunch of different like dummy batteries for different cameras that you can use. There's some lights that will take 8.4 volts. So you have HDMI or you have power in and power out. Now my F5 does have power out. It didn't have the HDMI pass through. The F5 Pro has both of those features. Super cool. It's got a quarter 20, ugh, a quarter 20 with metal threads in it. Bonus there instead of plastic threads. Love that. The headphone jack over here and a USB type C input. So you can actually power it via USB C. Now that's awesome because I can use just a standard power brick and plug it in here and run this thing for days on a big power, power brick. So love that feature. On the side is another quarter 20 with the threaded screws and on the top, another quarter 20 with the threaded screws. Now, notice there isn't one on this side, there's no room with the other jacks on here. And you have F1, F2, left, right, menu, up, down, and power on top. So you have regular push buttons on the top, as well as we'll see the on-screen display, the uh, touch screen option on here. So super cool stuff. Turning to the back, we have another quarter 20. So lots of different options. And then on this side is a battery port. Let me pull a battery out here. I've got one charging. And this uses standard Sony NPF style batteries. So you can just pop one in here. Uh, this is a small one, like a 570 or something, but it'll still power it long enough for me to do a video. So, you know, probably an hour or so, but you can go up to like the 970s on here. There's dummy ones with power supplies that you can get, uh, all kinds of different features for there. On the other side, <laughs> oddly enough, it looks like a upside down battery, even with the ports on it. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, why it's a dummy battery, but it's covering up a plate on here that can be used for mounting like a HDMI uh, transmitter, uh, lights, other, other things can be mounted on the back of here. So not really sure why it's a dummy battery, but it is, so we'll just roll with that. But all we do, pop the battery on here and we're good to go. Okay, it turned on, we'll go ahead and turn that off for right now. Let's see what else is in our box here. So we have a, it says HDTV to micro, but it's a uh, basically a mini HDMI to a full size HDMI. Perfect for connecting to my camera. It has the angle bracket, so it's got a cold shoe on the bottom and they mount on the side to connect to the port or the quarter 20 on the side. And this also has a cold shoe on it so I could put a microphone or a light on there. Inside, we have this little uh, bracket here, which will go on the outside, and that will take the sunscreen that is included. Uh, got another little bracket in here. Have to figure out what that guy's for. Not quite sure off the top of my head, but the sunscreen and the bracket are really nice. Now what's really noticeable right off the top is this like Velcro that's on here. This looks really, really good. The, I mean, it is just glued on there, but it looks really, really solid. My F5 always had a tendency to peel and in my camera bag, it would get stuck on the sides and it's starting to look a little ratty. Still held up and the sunshade was really, really nice to have. So I'm gonna keep those guys handy. So let's get into the features here. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. There we go, it's powering up right there. And I think just so that we have something to show on here, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to my camera. So stay right there. 
Okay, I actually couldn't find a cable long enough to go from my camera over to the monitor here, so I'm actually mirroring off my MacBook Pro over here. And I've got Lightroom up on here, but it's gonna demonstrate all the different features. So right now I have focus peaking turned on and it's actually trying to do that. So I have red outlines on the things that are gonna be in focus. I have my histogram over here. I have my audio meters over here and it's not picking anything up from my MacBook at the moment, but I have that. Now, why do I love that? I, so, Sometimes, you know, I can, I can see the audio meters if I have, I'm on the right, right screen on my Sony, but then I'm missing other things. So I tend to not have the audio meters turned on. I can't see them when I'm looking at my monitor. So if I lose audio, I, I, I have no idea until I start editing. I'm like, oh man, I have no audio. I got to re-record it again and start over. So now being able to see that there's audio coming in that is a major plus. Thank you, Feel World. Love that. Love that feature. Now, if I double tap, then I get this menu on the side of the screen here. And I can turn the histogram on and off, the focus assist on and off, peaking color, embedded audio, overexposure setting, exposure level. I can change that to different settings. The check field option, the false color option. That's awesome. The next page is the nine grid or roll of thirds. That's what that one is. The safe frame area, so I can have several different settings of safe frame, depending on how I'm, I'm cropping it or what my sensor is doing. The center marker just puts an X right about there in the center of the screen, so I can make sure I've got things centered right. The ratio marker, so I can set different aspect ratios. Super cool if I wanna kind of fake some anamorphic. That's really awesome to be able to have that. Let me bring that back up here. Uh, where was I here? Center marker, ratio markers, um, the mark color. What color do I want things to, to be when it's marking something? The mark width and the modified mark. Go to the next screen here. The Scan mode, under, I'm on under scan right now. Aspect ratio, anamorphic setting, on or off. And if I turn that on, I can set my anamorphic settings. Zoom, so I can actually zoom in up to 16 times to make sure that I've got something in focus, um, something like that, very handy. The image flip, just depending on how I have it orientated, I can uh, flip the image over and I can flip the on-screen display as well. So everything really handy from right there, or I can set up some of the keys on the top. I can also just hit the menu one and pull up the menu, and I can scroll through it with the buttons. Maybe I've got gloves on because it's really cold and it's not working on the touch screen, so I can just navigate through the buttons on the top. So that's super cool. Now, if we swipe up from the bottom, we have some shortcuts. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's six different shortcuts down here. And you can define what those are simply by holding down on it until it starts blinking, and then you can change the setting to whatever you want. So I have mine customized for the center marker on off, focus assist on off, histogram on off, the nine grid or rule of thirds on and off, and the overexposure setting on and off, and the zoom. So my six or so that I, I use on a regular basis are all right there at my fingertips. Super handy, couldn't ask for a better setup than this. Now, in terms of, you know, like lag, it's kind of hard for me to demonstrate any lag on here. Um, it's really good, I'm, you know, every HDMI monitor is gonna have some lag. So it's nothing really to talk about, it's, just as good or just as bad as anything else I've ever used. There's, it just is what it is. You know, you're you're going through different cables, cables and inputs and outputs. You're going to have a slight lag, but it's no worse than anything else I've I've ever used. So, pretty happy with that. Now, the the ones let's kind of I'm going to go back. I've kind of covered all the features on here, but I really want to highlight a few things 
that I think really make this stand out. Uh, one is the USB-C power. So standard power brick, plug it in, run it for huge amounts of time compared to Sony batteries that you know, you're know you gonna get anywhere from you know an hour or several hours depending on the size. But it's just that extra power option. You know, and if I'm going to run it all day, you know, in a studio setting like where I'm doing a tutorial on it, I, I don't want to deal with swapping batteries, then I can use the 12 volt power in. Super easy to find 12 volt power supplies. I probably have a drawer full of them out of the garage. So putting power to this thing to run all day long is not going to be a problem. So I really, really like that. The fact that it does use Sony batteries, another big win. So I like that. The accessory port on the back for, for mounting different things, I may never use that. I don't use a wireless HDMI transmitter or I, I'm not gonna put lights on the monitor, uh, probably not, so that's not a big deal. The ability to flip it, so if I'm behind the camera, I can have it facing me, or when I'm recording like this, I just flip it over and now I can see the monitor from the front of the camera and real easy, just tap, 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 and I can flip the screen over. So that's really huge. The audio meters, huge, huge feature. Absolutely love it. Now, one thing I am gonna double check on the price. I actually got this on Amazon and that's just before I make a statement that may not be accurate here. Yeah, this is, uh, let me double check. 139.99 so 140 bucks for what is really a good mid-range high quality hdmi monitor and it can take hd it can take 4k input now it's only a, a 1080 screen so it'll but it, it will show everything on here it'll, it'll down sample it so that it actually works so it's not going to cut off because you're sending it 4K and it's only a 1080 screen. So you don't have to worry about that. So Field World, been around for a long time. I have used their products for literally years. Um, I can't even, probably four or five years, I've been using Field World monitors, huge fan. And when this one came out, I had to get it just because of those additional features. The touch screen, nice. I guess um, sometimes dealing with the menu, especially on the older ones was, I mean, let's be honest, it, it was kind of a pain. Um, you'd hit the menu and it would pop up the menu and then you'd hit the wrong key and the menu would go away. And then you, you get into the menu and you go to the next section. So you're in a sub menu and then you hit the wrong key and you're all the way back out again. It was, it was really frustrating to use at times. Now, over time you get used to it and you learn how to use it and it's not really a problem but if you don't use it for a while and then you go back to it and you're just like you know sometimes it's just an exercise in frustration dealing with the archaic menu that they had so the touch screen on here in and of itself is cool but the whole new menu design on here is fantastic so huge fan of this new menu super easy to navigate it's kind of graphic driven. I don't even have to think about it. It says the stuff right here. I have the different pages, kind of like most cameras. Uh, the icons on here are pretty clear as to what they are. So, uh, you know, an F or a gear. Okay, maybe it's not super clear on what the intent of any given option is, but one, two, three, four, there's six pages in here and it's not hard to find anything. Nothing goes past the height of the screen. So if you go to one page, there's a few options. Go to the next page, there's more options. So it doesn't take long to navigate through here to find the setting that you want. Now that, like I said, that in and itself is cool. I really like that. This new menu is fantastic. And the, uh, here we go, the shortcuts. That's awesome. There's really only five or six things that I toggle on and off on a regular basis. So having those right at my fingertips is super cool. So I highly recommend this. Check it out. There's a link in the description below. Uh, takes you to Amazon. Uh, sure, if you buy it on there, I do get a little piece of that action, but it doesn't cost you any extra to buy it on Amazon and help support the channel. Um, 
can't say anything more highly about this thing. Absolutely a fan. I'm, this is going to be my go-to monitor from now on. Let's check it out, Fieldworld F5 Pro. Thanks for watching everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.